Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. I'm praying you're having a wonderful day in the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, my friends, I'm excited about speaking to you today and uh, I'm excited and um, I'm also, I don't, I don't know if Gary, if I should use the word uh, agitated or bothered or what, I don't know exactly what word, but I have in my hand here uh, the bill, the law now, passed into law. The, um, they call it the Protection of Marriage Act, but I call it the, 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 they call it the Respect for Marriage Act. I call it the Disrespect of Marriage Act. I call it the Destruction of Marriage Act. Uh, it seems to me that um, some politicians are just plain old smarter than others, and some are just dumb uh, and don't seem to know what's going on. Um, and, uh, and, and people take an opportunity to make a big deal out of nothing. Now, no one is challenging interracial marriages. People are marrying men, black men are marrying white women, White women are marrying black men. Hispanics are marrying African Americans. African Americans are marrying Hispanics. Asians are marrying whites. Whites are marrying Asians. Asians are marrying Latinos. Latinos are marrying Asians. Asians are marrying African Americans. African Americans are marrying Asians. People are getting married. But the, the left, uh, the wicked, have figured out a way to sound an alarm that 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 that, that shouldn't be sound, um, to bring in a what if to put up a straw man argument, so that they could get passed into law the wickedness that they wanted passed in the law or protected or respected, whatever you want to call it. So we want to pass a law and call it the Respect for Marriage Act, even though the law that they pass disrespects marriage. And I'm here to, to let you know that I am disappointed. Uh, it's not, it, it's a bipartisan attack on marriage. Um, several uh, Republican sen senators uh, and uh, North Carolina senators, Tom Tillis, and uh, yes, Tom um, and Richard Burr, they they sided with uh, the Democrats and they passed this Respect for Marriage Act. And, you know, um, the Senate, with its 60 vote threshold, was the main, the, look at this, was the main obstacle to the bill's passage, but it passed. 61 to 36, 61 to 36. So it squeaked through. Thank you, Tom Tillis. Uh, thank you, Richard Burr. Thank you, Susan Collins. Uh, I'm not going to even go down the list of these uh, uh, Republicans who uh, voted for it. Th that's a reason, my friends, why I boldly and gladly let you know that Brother Wooden is a non-affiliate. I am a independent. Because some of these people, you can't trust them anyway. But I want to say to the world, I want to say to those who are watching, the God of the Bible has the last say. The Bible says in uh, Psalms uh, 90, 94 and verse 20, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee. That is, shall the throne of iniquity, shall wicked men have fellowship with God. Men which frameth justice or frameth mischief, excuse me, which frameth mischief by a law. They take mischievous behavior. No one is trying to prevent uh, uh, interracial couples from marrying. The issue is same-sex marriage. 
And the reason same-sex marriage, which is an oxymoronic statement, it's a lie from the pit of hell, will always be an issue is because the one who created marriage said this. And I, I guess I guess we just got to disregard the scripture. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number two and uh, uh, verse 24, uh, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife. A man leave mom and dad and cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. The biblical definition is a union not between individuals as the destruction and disrespect uh, for marriage act calls it, but it is a union between a man and a woman. Now, I want to say this, that these people, they prove to me over and over and over that the Bible is true. The Bible says in the last days, Second Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You're deceived. You're going down a, a road of de uh, deception if you think that it is a good thing to um, uh, pass uh, and protect and put in special provisions for perversion. Um, uh, as we, let me say this, as we redefine marriage, and as marriage now is defined by any individuals who enter into the relationship, it's, it's two individuals, uh, what's going to happen is fewer and fewer people are going to get married because it means nothing. It means nothing. If, if anybody and everybody, if anything and everything applies, oh, you got, and, and they got written in this thing under section three, uh, millions of people, including interracial and same sex couples have entered into marriage and have enjoyed the rights and the privileges associated with marriage. If I was a part of an interracial marriage, I'd be insulted that you would put my marriage, uh, me marry, my being married to another uh, human being of the opposite sex whose, co uh, whose color may not be the same about, but she is of the opposite sex. You're going to put that in the same category of two persons of the same sex. They can't reproduce. Matter of fact, now it is the best, it's the best birth control you come out with, come up with, if, if, if you really want to slow down the production of the human race, just uh, 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 promote more uh, uh, same sex uh, couples. That'll do it because uh, babies don't come from that union. But as they are protecting this, couples joining in marriage deserve to have the dignity, stability, and ongoing protection that marriage affords to families and children. Well, you're stripping it of its dignity. The dignity of marriage is a union between a man and a woman. Uh, full faith and credit to any public act recorded or judicial proceedings of any other state pertaining to a marriage between, look at this, here's the new one, two individuals. What demon came up with this? Marriage between two individuals. The Bible says, shall this, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Man says two individuals. Well, we're going to see who's going to have the last words because my, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, man can make it legal, but man cannot make it right. And with all of the problems that we have in the country today, oh, we got supply problems, supply chain problems. We got a crime problem. We have a opioid problem. We got a fentanyl problem. We got a border pro problem. We got problems. We got racial problems. We have problems. This is the big news. This is what passes. This is what gets the time of our elected officials. Now, right now, right now, there are protections in it for churches, but um, I see it coming. It says, um, uh, this is, uh, uh, it says, in general, nothing in this act or any amendment by this act shall be construed to diminish or uh, abrogate 
uh, a religious liberty or conscious protection otherwise available to an individual or organization under the Constitution of the United States or federal law. Uh, and this thing is, let's see, it says, uh, this includes uh, um, amendments uh, to the Constitution, nonprofits, religious organizations, including churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, non denominational ministries, interdenominational and ecumenical organizations, mission organizations, faith based and social agencies, religious uh, educational institutions, and nonprofit entities whose principal purpose is, is the study, practice, and advancement of religion, and any employee of such organizations shall not be required to provide services, accommodations, advantages, facilities, goods, or privileges for uh, for the solemnization or the celebration of a marriage. Any refusal under this subsection to provide such services, accommodations, advantages, facilities, goods, or privileges shall not thank God create any civil claim or cause of action. It won't today. But as, listen, as people see this, they know these people are smart. They know as the commercials keep being run, as the public service announcements, as the paid non-thinking celebrities who will say anything, you got the dollar, they'll make the speech. Uh, and, and, and everybody knows that if you're part of Hollywood or if you're part of uh, these, these, these companies, you got to uh, toe the company line. I was watching the other day where one big mouth sports star, I enjoy watching him, but he made a mistake and, and made reference to the homosexual community and called them homosexual. Do you know that man came back on? I mean, this loud mouth guy that cuss all the time and know everything about everything came back on and apologized to the homosexual community because he called homosexuals homosexuals. And the homosexuals said, no, don't call us homosexual, call us gay. Now, never mind, never mind the offense to your, your, your vast audience who we got to every three words we hear, you're cussing, and uh, oh my, I wonder, I, I, I still wonder, have a memo been given to the black guys? Black guys, when you report on sports, you curse. You swear. Now, white guys don't have to do that. And if you watch a show on uh, uh, these sports channels and you see mainly white guys report, uh, 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 reporting, uh, you don't hear profanity. But here comes the brothers. And, oh, we're dropping all the D's and all that. I mean, what's up with that? It wasn't always that way. But but you can, you can talk like that and, and not offer an apology. But if you call... Now, the homosexual, a homosexual, but don't call them by a word that was not originally described, uh, invented to describe them anyway. The homosexual was a word just like homophobia was made up to describe a made up condition uh, to describe people who are not uh, who are not uh, all right and comfortable being around homosexuals. And, you know, someone told me one time, you know, the word homosexual is not in the Bible, but that's because the Bible is written over 450, over 460 years before that word was invented. So that might be why it's not in the Bible, but there are oodles and oodles of scriptures that describe the behavior. And every time it's described, it's described uh, in the pejorative. It's wrong. So now here we are, and I'm going a little long about this, where uh, we're in a day where uh, you can cuss, you can swear, but you cannot disagree with the homosexual community on anything. Don't make a mistake and call the homosexual communities homosexuals, because if you do, they're going to correct you and say, you better call me gay, and you got to come back on and apologize. So my friends, I'm telling you, this is a very different day that we're living in. So as they put this stuff on television, as they talk about it, as they show it, they know that this is designed to change your mind. I talked to a pastor, Brother Gary, I didn't know we'd be talking about this today. I talked to a pastor just this morning.
I could call his name. I could tell you where his church is. He's a powerful man of God. He told me the other day that some people, now God added and, 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 and God just sent people, but he had some members to leave because they told him, Pastor, we believe that homosexuals can be saved. Now, what, he was, what they were saying was, we believe that homosexuals can be saved and remain in homosexuality, that you are being too harsh when you require that they, you know, you know that scripture in the Bible, come ye out from among them and be ye separate. You know, John the Baptist came preaching repentance, repent from your sins. Jesus says, unless you repent, go uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, do likewise. And, and he said to one person, uh, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing than this come upon thee. So now if the preacher, if the preacher says that wrong behavior is anti-human, because if all humans practiced it, it would mean the extermination of the human race. It, it certainly flies in the face of biology. You can't argue with that. You know, you know, I thought we were all for biology, right? You got to trust biology, trust science. Okay, then. So it flies, in the, it flies in the face of that. But if you make the mistake of, of calling it wrong, uh, now you, you, you're being uh, uh, peppered and, and uh, made fun of and talked about. And, and so people are being frightened and beaten into submission. Well, my brothers and sisters, I'm not changing from God's truth. They can pass this defense of ma respect for marriage. Uh, I call it the Disrespect for Marriage Act. All they want, you can call it what you want. It is not uh, good. And I'm telling you, we need to pray because in time, the next thing they're going to come after and I know what you're saying, Wooden, how do you know? All I'll say to you is this. I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong about these things. Soon they'll be coming after the church, and they'll be saying to the church, drop the judgment. Now, uh, Judge Mathis, I saw him say it not too long ago. Said, you know, I know, said, you know, your church, you got to you know, kind of go on and preach your gospel and go on and do what you do, but how about leaving off the judgment? Well, no human judge has the right to tell the preacher how to preach. And, uh, and because, see, the Bible speaks to uh, them too. Psalms 82 declares that God standeth in the congregation. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Uh, he judgeth among the gods. That is, the God of the Bible is the judge among the judges. He's the judge among earth's Elohims, earth little uh, elected officials, earth circuit judges, earth's supreme court justices. The God of the Bible stands above all of them. And God declared, even with the judges, he said, I have I have said you are gods, you are judges, you are Elohims, you are men of authority. He says, and all of your children of the most high. Look at this. He says, but you shall die like men and fall uh, like one of the princes. I want to say to every elected official, every judge, every movie star, every sports star, every talking head out there, including myself, to everyone, we're all going to die and we'll all have to stand before a mighty God, a holy God, and we're going to have to give an account of this and and Tillis and uh, all, uh, uh, Burr and all of the rest of them who, who jumped ship and voted for this whole Democrat Party uh, Senate uh, who voted for this stuff. You're going to have to answer to the almighty. And uh, uh, let's see what House Speaker going to stand with you when you try to explain it to God. And uh, right now, I don't know how long it's going to last, but in Japan, Japan upheld their same sex marriage ban. God bless the Japanese. They upheld that, but you know, in America, uh, we want to uh, be woke and correct and that kind of a thing. Now, uh, I've gone long, but listen, I just wanted to speak to you about this. Um, uh, I want you to know that uh, uh, we're officially entering into the Christmas season. Christmas, Christmas, not, not holiday. Here we go again. Here we go again. And you know what? They've already beat me to the punch up. I'm, I'm watching. I want you to do something. I want you to pay attention to the commercials and just watch how these agencies bend themselves into pretzels to keep from saying Christmas. 
I would to God. Now, it may never happen. But then again, I didn't think that Roe v. Wade would be overturned in our lifetime. So it may happen. It would be something if just for one Christmas, one, everybody who's born again, if it's not the Christmas season, if it's not the Christmas time of the year, then just don't pretend that it is. And if there's no Christmas, then there's no reason to buy the Christmas gifts, to spend the money online, to do the cyber thing, to uh, go to the malls, praise the Lord, keep your money in your pocket, because why would you do it? It's not Christmas. It's the holiday season. Well, the holiday that we celebrate is Christmas. And if people are offended by that day, then you ought to, you, you mean to tell me you offended, you're too offended to say Merry Christmas, but you want my money. Wouldn't it be something if the Christians would just say, you know what, just for one year, we're going to just set this one out. We're going to set it out because you don't want to recognize Christ and his birth. And and you, you know, you, 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 you just uncomfortable with it and it gags in your throat and oh, you act like you're about to die when someone says Merry Christmas. All right. How about this? What well, if, if saying Merry Christmas is about to kill you? I wonder how you what your response will be when I say I'm going to keep my money. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to keep my money. I'm not going to give you a dime. And and uh, and next year, let me tell you, let me tell you what would happen. Now, listen to me. If the Christians would do it, if just 20 to 30 percent of Christians would make this move, since since they're boycotting the name of Jesus, they don't want Christ gatherings that you want to be mentioned, you know, because 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 Hanukkah, Hanukkah uh, is, is a celebration. It, it's one of the smallest celebrations in Israel, but it has scriptural significance. Kwanzaa, totally made up. So if you're going to take Christmas and put it on the same level, but Kwanzaa is, from my understanding, in that observance, you don't buy gifts. You make them. And you do other things. And there's some wholesome things that people do. All right. So the big engine behind it all is December the 25th, Christmas Day. You want to get those uh, uh, gifts underneath the tree, and everybody knows it, but you don't want to say Merry Christmas. Wouldn't it be something, my friend? Just think about it. I know uh, you might say, oh, wouldn't it crazy? And you might be right, but I tell you this, I'm right on this. If we would ever do it, I guarantee you, they would never, ever try that again. I think they do things to Christians because they know we'll take it. Christians just roll over and play dead. But there comes a time when you have to stand up. There comes a time when you have to just stand up and say, you know what? I'm not going to participate with this. And I got, I'm telling you, my friends, you know, in places where they just seem to just don't want to uh, acknowledge uh, 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 Christ and, and that it's Christmas at Christmas time. I, I, why are we going along with this? Why are we doing it? We don't have the strength as Christians uh, that, uh, that the uh, Jehovah's Witness have. And the Jehovah's Witness movement is not as large in this country as the Protestant Christian movement. And certainly not as large as the Catholic Christian movement. But the Jehovah's Witness have the strength, the courage, whatever it takes. To say we're not going to participate and when they don't buy Christmas gifts for their children and the children don't drop dead. The children don't go out and rob a bank. The kids don't go kill someone. This is just the way it is. But with us, we exercise no such strength on anything. And I'm telling you, it's time for us to stand. It's time for us to stand as never before. Stand on the word of God. And I want after hey. After having said all this to you about this, let me be one of the first to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> See, my issue is not that it's Christmas time. My issue is what the world is trying to do to it. They're trying to make it uh, a, a secular uh, observance. They're trying to take Christ out of it. Um, uh, uh, they're trying to just uh, do away with it. And I am not going to stand idly by and let them do it. 
as long as God gives me breath and God's give us strength right here at the upper room. And I know so many other pastors who feel the same way. We're going to let our voices be heard. Now my time is up. I went a little long today, but I wanted to talk to you about this because there are just so many things that are going on uh, in this country and uh, we need to be in prayer for our nation. We need to be in prayer for the world. We need to be in prayer that God would have his way, that, that the Lord would smile on us and, and, and give us mercy and give us grace and, and pray that the Lord just raise up uh, good people to put in office. And when I say good people, that's not code for Republicans. That's not code for Democrats. It's, it's, it's not code at all. We need good people. We need good people. And we need to pray that God gives us good people. And, uh, and we put these good people in office because that's where much of the power lies. We all have to live under the laws that they pass. Now, my friends, I want you to know this. That tonight, I will not be speaking at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Probably by the time you hear this, my plane will be landing in Memphis, Tennessee. God called home a wonderful woman of God uh, on last week, Mother Louise Patterson. She was married to the late, great G.E. Patterson. And God bless Mother Louise P Patterson to live a wonderful 84 years. And what a wonderful woman of God uh, she was. And, uh, and she's reunited up there in heaven. Well, she's united with Jesus and <clears throat> reunited with her husband. And we're just so excited. And Pamela and I are in Memphis. We will be in Memphis by the time you see this, if it's the Lord's will. And uh, we'll be attending her homegoing service Friday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, there in Memphis, Tennessee at the beautiful Bountiful Blessings Church of God in Christ. Um, and uh, so we're going to be there. But my friends, I have a treat for you. God has been using uh, Elder John Amanchuku. He's been flying all over from one uh, end of America to the next, from the uh, west coast, to, from the east to the west, west to the east, north to south, south to the north, preaching the word of the Lord, standing, going to school boards meetings, encouraging people, standing for right, standing for life, standing for truth, standing for Jesus Christ, standing on the word of God. And he's going to be, he's my first assistant, and he is going to be preaching tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I'm excited about him uh, and about God using him. And I want to thank you for your patience that you've had with me because of the scheduling and the time of the year. We haven't been as consistent on Thursday nights as we were in times past, but the schedule will come back uh, uh, and become more like it normally is as we get through uh, this time of the year. But I, I, I have heard from many of you and you've been blessed by the tremendous speakers that we have brought before you. I thank God that God has given us a deep bench so that the ministry can continue on. Now, I'm excited about the things of God. And I'm excited about you. And here we are in this year of triumph. We have, we have triumph over COVID. We have triumph. God has watched over us. The Lord has blessed us. And we're, when, I, when I come back to you the next time, I want to start talking to you about our end of the year revival. We have some good things lined up. Some powerful people coming. God's going to do some mar marvelous things. So my friends, I love you with the love of the Lord. And join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, where we're going to gather for Bible study, preaching, and teaching. Elder Armand Chukwu is going to give you the word of God, and you're going to be blessed by the word of God. And my friends, the Lord willing, we'll be right back in the saddle Sunday morning. God has already given me the word to declare to the people, and I'm going to preach it with everything that I have in me. Now, I love you. May God's choice blessings be yours. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for how you've stood by us this year. Hey, it's been a doozy, hasn't it? But God has proven himself to be faithful and to be good. So I love you. 
And may God's choice blessings be yours and join us right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Make it a great day.